Hey everyone, I'm Ace of Clay and welcome to another sculpting video. If you're new here, I'm a sculptor and every week I make a new sculpture. Today I'm sculpting another Courage the Cowardly Dog character, Freaky Fred. Now Freaky Fred, if you're familiar with the show, is Muriel's nephew. He comes to visit Muriel, Eustace thinks he's a freak, Courage is scared to death of him and he's got this really weird thing for hair. He actually shaves Courage completely bald in the episode. So if you want more of that, be sure to check it out. In my opinion, this is probably the weirdest episode of Courage ever and he definitely makes a creepy sculpture that you will see very soon. And before we get started the seamstress plush is back for a limited time. I am signing these. She is available right now at aceofclay.com. I don't have very many of her left so if you want to grab her now is your last chance because after this she is gone forever. aceofclay.com link in the description box below. And now without further ado let's make Freaky Fred. Okay, today I want to start with the head. So I covered a ball of aluminum foil in some Super Sculpey Living doll, and I'm getting the basic shape down. Once I've got that shape figured out, it's time to map out where all the facial features are going to go, starting with the eyes, using my large ball stylus to press out the eye sockets and sort of form the bridge of the nose. And then we're going to go in, smooth some things out, and then start working on the mouth with my Explorer tool. Now my goal with Fred's face is to make it as unsettling as possible. I want him to make you uncomfortable when you look at him. He of course is going to have his huge grin, two dead staring eyes with a low brow, and I want him to look like he's got something on his mind and maybe not the best of intentions. Now the thing about going from a 2D design to a 3D design is that there is a ton of room for more detail. I could sculpt him in his flat design, but where's the fun in that? I want to add more wrinkles, eye bags, texture, dimension, more colors to this guy that he hasn't had before. Now his teeth are the main event on his face. He's got this huge grin that stretches from side to side, even off the sides of his head. It's so big. And I want to carve out these teeth while still using the cartoon version as a guide. I'm just carving out the spaces in between each one, adding more clay to some of them to add more dimension, make them uneven, and so on. Now I added a little too much clay to that front tooth, so we're just going to shave some of that off and then go back to refining. Now for his eyebrows, which take up a good chunk of his face, just going to add these flat rectangle shapes and texture them. Now this guy doesn't really have lips, but he needs something to hold all those teeth in. So I'm gonna add a thin snake of clay around his mouth. This is gonna bring his teeth further into his head and raise the rest of his face. After finishing his lips, it's time to finish off his face with his nose, his tiny little nose. Now let's finish off his face with some defined smile lines and a bunch of wrinkles. And of course, we can't forget his little ears. After a bunch of refining, his head is done and we can start working on the body. Starting with the armature, got my wooden base with two holes drilled for the aluminum armature wire. 
Gonna have that shaped out, add the arms with more wire, some bacon bond to attach some Super Sculpey Ultralight. Let's bulk this guy out and get this armature baked. And there we go, ready to bake. Once it's baked, let's cover the whole thing in some more living doll and then start working on the legs with snakes of clay. After shaping out the legs and adding a couple wrinkles, I'm going to finish off the rest of his suit details like the lapels and tie. To create the look of stretching fabric on his jacket, I'm just rolling this taper dotting tool on the surface with even pressure. And let's pop on some buttons. And it's time for the head check. Looks pretty good with his head on. Now I just need to finish off his shoes. So I'm just gonna cut the bottom of the pants here to make room for them and stick those on. And one more thing before we bake him again, I need to make his briefcase. So starting with aluminum foil, let's get this thing figured out. Now let's finish it off with some seams and more wrinkles. And there we go, he's ready for another bake. And once he's baked and cooled down, let's get those arms finished up. Of course, we gotta add some bacon bond. Adding bacon bond can replace wire wrapping when you're having trouble with your clay sticking to your wire. I actually think it works better than wire wrapping. To attach his briefcase, I'm just wrapping some floral wire around the handle and where his hand is going to be, and then I'm going to disguise everything with his hand over the top. Alright, that looks pretty good. Let's finish up his other arm. And I'm going to make his free hanging hand out of some cosplay because it stays flexible after it's baked. After attaching his head and baking him one last time, it's time for paint. I'm using the Army Painter War Paints for this project, starting with this nice color for his skin. I'm going to get that all over everything, and then we can go in and add a wash. And then, of course, dab off the excess. Now I'm going to bring in some other colors to his face, like some dark blue and gray for his eye bags and the darkness around his eyes. Really want to recess these as much as possible. After all the main colors are on, I'm going to dry brush a lighter skin tone on the surface to highlight everything and really make the details pop. To paint the teeth, we're going to do some reverse painting, starting with the darkest color that I want the shadows and spaces in between the teeth to be, which is this dark brown. Just going to give everything a nice coat of this. Now I'm going to take this white color and focus on the largest teeth individually and then dry brush it onto the rest, being careful not to get into any of those grooves because I want those to stay dark brown. This was a very satisfying process. Now 
Now to sharpen everything, I'm going in with a fine paintbrush and even darker wash and outlining all of the spaces in between each tooth. Check out that naughty million dollar smile. Now let's paint the eyes this nice dead green color. And of course we gotta add some tiny red veins. And I'm gonna place his irises really close to his brows to really sell that creepy, I'm thinking something bad expression. <laughs> now I'm gonna paint his eyebrows this light blonde color that is pretty close to his skin tone because I want it to kind of look like they're not even there. I just think it looks weirder like this. <laughs> now let's add a quick wash to them, darken the eye sockets a little bit more, and then we're going to glaze the teeth and eyes with some Americana triple thick glossy varnish. This is the best high gloss acrylic varnish you're gonna get before you start using resin. There we go, his face is done. Now let's paint his body. This nice olive green color for his suit. A couple coats of that. All these army painter paints are pretty much one coat covers everything, but I'm lazy and I didn't shake the bottle enough, so that's why it's going on kind of thin. Now let's glob on some black for the base. Now for the last step, it's time to attach some real hair, air quotes there, using some synthetic wool and Fabri-Tac fabric glue. This is the best glue that you're gonna use to attach fabric and hair and whatever to your polymer clay sculptures. It's got a super fast grab, dries quickly, and works great. Now I just want to manipulate the hair to create his iconic hairstyle. Once the hair is looking pretty good, say it with me. And he's done! My sculpture of Freaky Fred is complete. Let me know what you think of him in the comments. So that's Freaky Fred. I hope you like him. I think he came out really cool. I love his hair. I'm glad that I made it real. And his little shaky briefcase thing. He looks, he looks really weird. He's very similar to some other characters that I've made on this channel, but I just had to make him if I was gonna go into the Courage universe. So I hope you like him. I hope you liked watching the process. And as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Don't forget to grab a seamstress plush if you want one. She's only gonna be available for a little bit longer. Like I said, I don't have too many of her left. Join my Facebook group, Snakes of Clay, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.